right now here here is nothing I don't find any vents or anything so when I close the roof window and I park the RV here and I go home next day this is like sauna in Hoppi there is like two air vents on the floor and there is one air vent on the roof but you cannot close so the air is always moving but it's not the case with this so this is Hummer 554 uh, swing and it's 98 and uh, the service book is basically written by somebody himself and and so I'm I'm changing the brake fluids, coolant fluid, motor oil, motor filter, gearbox oils, air filter, cabin filter, or pollen filter, and and then I'm changing the steering fluids or oil. I want to tint the windows, and then we have the 160 watt solar panel coming on the roof. Uh, that was the only size what I can install on the roof. I did almost fit the 270 watt on the roof, but because the mounting brackets are lifting the panel and it's going like this angle and then it's moving closer and closer to the uh, roof window and that is not ideal. Also it's going over the highest point of the roof and then the air is going to be going to be going under the panel and it's lifting the panel off so it's not ideal the 160 is basically what I, I did find so far but it's better than nothing I want to pull it like that when we are driving we are charging also the, the of course the motor battery or the start battery but we are also charging this side battery so and I'm trying to fit 100 amp or AKM under the passenger seat. So far, what I did take the dimensions and everything, it seems like it's 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 basically fitting there. So then we have the solar panel going on the roof, and then I want to get rid of the EPL. So the electro block or whatever you want to call that, that is the somewhere where is the it's basically there is the battery charger and then there is the it's basically maybe I'm not sure if it's connected battery one and battery two is connected and you can control the everything basically through the EPL uh, via the Hummer control panel I don't like that I, I like to have like switches and everything I have to I like to have like, let's say we have the Victron battery charger under the driver seat. Then we have the solar controller here, somewhere on the wall. And then we have the fuse box on, under the driver seat. If the charger is broken or something, I can always replace that. But with the EPL or electro block, uh, that is not the case. Uh, I can try to fix the charger inside the electro block but uh, I think I will need to find some repair shop or something and send the whole damn block to that place. I think taking the electro block away is basically pretty easy. It's basically the same what is the Dometic uh, converter in the Hoppy uh, trailers or the RVs. So there is always all the system plus and minus cables and then there is going to be one cable coming from the 230 volt. This RV is basically pretty bad shape. The body is perfect, no rust, nothing like that. Uh, the engine is good, gearbox is good. It's 98 but it's, uh, it's basically imported from Germany during 2005 and they did replace the uh, the gearbox when it was driven like 100 1000 kilometers now it has been driven 1, 158,000 kilometers and 
we are going to change the timing belt. I did book the service time next Friday for timing belt change. But overall, I think the cabin itself is pretty damn nice, and the outside is pretty okay. We did uh, remove the bike rack from the behind the RV. We don't have bikes with us and anything like that. There's a lot of things like this broken here. This is pretty nice because you get the hot air from here. But I did order things like these from AliExpress. It's, it's costing like one euro or two euros. Different sizes costing different amount. But uh, one is coming here. This is just example. But one is coming here. Then I'm I'm basically maybe removing if I remove the EPL then I'm removing this whole damn panel. This is I really want to have like power switch, you know what you can turn, nothing like this. And so I'm removing this whole damn panel with the EPL or editor block. Then I'm installing grill here, and then I'm also installing grill here, uh, top of the truma. So the truma or the backside of the truma is getting a lot of more air. This is pretty interesting. Some previous owner did install foam here, foam strips here. And also we need to fix the shower and toilet door. It's too tight. It doesn't dry or anything. So I'm basically installing one grill at the top of the door and one grill at the bottom of the door. And the reason is that it's basically it's getting surface mold already because that is the only way to get any air inside the toilet. And also we are removing these. These are pretty useless for us. Our plan is that my dad is sleeping there and I'm sleeping over there. But it can change because I don't know. It, it can change. That is, this spot is not that roomy. My craziest plan was to cut the hole here. So basically get rid of this cut hole here and then do other cut here and make like drawer what you can take away or pull away from here. So let's say the maybe the roof is going to be here. You can have like one big drawer going here. Hmm. The gas line is the only problem. <laughs> and also the plan is was to or my idea, my craziest idea was to have one dryer here and one dryer here. Or at least something like maybe cut op this open and install one box here so you don't need to lift the seating always. But I don't know, let's see. These are all the curtains are cleaned in the wash washing machine that is cleaned on the washing machine or the cover is cleaned on the washing machine same goes here and I'm installing 12 volt sockets somewhere maybe here on that panel or maybe here and maybe I want to install the laser battery monitor also here I'm making new table from the wood because this is going to be table, table and seats all the time. And usually we hate when the table is so damn wide. So I'm making a little bit more narrow uh, table from wood because this is cardboard or something. I don't know. I it's not like humor issue. I see a lot of this like in 90s 2000 year 2006 or 7 even have like 
I don't know. This is maybe cardboard or something. Because it has a lot of holes. But I'm installing the something like plywood or glue wood or something because we need to also install we need to replace this and we need to replace this I don't know do I want to uh, paint that maybe during the summertime I'm painting that with the I was thinking maybe humor gray or something what is outside also light gray so it's basically fitting to this color and we can use uh, the same paint here on this new on the new sink tops and everything and maybe on the dining table figure out something for the the plus side the butter terminal or the the soys the or basically the bolt in the soy is basically damaged and the nut is just like turning around and the saw itself it's it's totally blocked so it's not staying on the butter anymore so maybe I need to take the bolt and the mm, nut away replace that and then I need to sand or something between the the walls on the saw itself so it's now it's closed but it needs to close a little bit more I can demonstrate that with here so the positive side saw is basically this is connected this piece is connected to this piece so the nut cannot or the bolt is doing anything anymore so maybe I need to sand down the inner wall here and here so it's it's giving a little bit more tighter on the positive terminal so now you are asking why I'm not using like new soy it's because the, the Fiat the Ducato has own kind of show on the positive side there is so much like lead or something here and there is like five positive cables going inside the lead so it's basically casted inside the show so you can I can basically do yeah but there is like 10 centimeters of any cables so if I do like ring connectors and use a soil like this, then it's, it's I don't know. Uh, yeah, we can use something soil like this and throw everything inside here and just squeeze everything together. But I'm, hmm, I don't know if it's holding any better because then the cables can just wobble, wobble and be braid and they can break loose from the, from here. So I want to get something like solid piece or something like more solid fix for that. So I did go to the store with the car. Even it's basically two blocks away, but uh, the car and package is something like 10 kilograms and then the other motors package is pretty big also. So I don't want to carry those in the 27 Celsius outside. So let's check what all we have. This whole package it cost 70 euros, but it's pretty damn cheap. I don't know, the filters in Finland is pretty damn expensive. In total, when you are saving something like 5 euros, 7 euros in each part, then it's making big difference. So, we have the pollen filter, but this something what we need to install. Still, I don't know if there is even pollen filter in the Fiat Ducato. You can check uh, from the internet on YouTube, somebody did say that you can install something like pollen filter, if you, even if you don't have that. Then this is the one belt for the... I cannot remember, but it was so cheap, I 
just take this because why not? It's something like two euros or something. Uh, I did have a little bit left over money. Uh, my dad did uh, transfer me 70 euros, so my total was 60 euros. So these are globe looks. So it's Kamoka, but it was costing like 2 euros 20 cents or something for one globe look. And in Finland it's costing like 11 euros for one piece. So total will be 44 euros in Finland. And total in other motors was something like 9 euros. 80 cents or something. I don't need to change these, but it's pretty okay to have these because I don't want to order these from Iron Motors and pay 10 euro shipping for just for the glow plugs. Then we had the big big air filter. Nothing fancy. It's the cylinder size or the shape uh, oil filter from Pepe. This was costing like 3 euros or something. It was costing a lot more here in Finland from Motonet or something. Uh, this is the fuel filter. This is interesting because there was two different shapes or style filters Easy. and yeah this is the the one one has something like drain plug here in the picture but this doesn't have that so I don't know let's see I'm not sure I, can I even change this I know that in C Max this is the painful painful thing to change because you need to get all the air with the vacuum pump away from the system and everything but the Ducato is so old technique and then we have the the wiper plates or windsy yeah windscreen wiper plates these are really cheap at the Iron Motors. I'm a little bit sad that I didn't get new ones for the C-Max also because I think these are costing something like 5 euros or something and some off-brand or cheap brand plates are costing something like 17 euros a piece in Finland so you are saving 12 euros for one so 24 euros and then is the then is the big change. So I'm going to change the carbox oil for Transmax manual. This is the I think this is the KL four or three. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Api KL four. So this is costing something like eleven euros in Finland in Motonet, and it's costing like five euros in in Aero Motors. The carbox will take only 1.8 liters, so 2 liters is pretty okay. And keep in mind, it's pretty hard to find the right stuff for the. Also, everyone is also saying that you need to check the manual. Yeah, but the manual is from 98, so the standards are really changed. So I did use a Castrol uh, oil selector and then I did use a liquid molly oil selector or liquid molly liquid selectors then I did check the neste then I did check the I did yeah I think I did use it just like the castrol neste liquid molly uh, maybe something else and I did cross reference everything so this should be the right stuff for the gearbox And this should be right stuff for the brake fluid. It's the Valeo brake fluid 5.1. This is really expensive in Finland, I don't know. But it's pretty cheap in the Iron Motors also.
of course, a lot of people are saying that oh, you, you need to have the uh, what is the the original Sunlu or something? What is the I don't I don't remember, but you need to have the original oils and everything like that. But if you check the the Fiat, oh, I don't know. That is super weight that there is no Fiat code in the service book or the handbook. So let's say you have the Ford, something like 7335 or something. What is the, the Ford reference number for the oil or what it needs to meet the Ford standard or something. But there is nothing like that in the service book or handbook in the car. Mm, maybe they didn't have something like that in the 98 or something. But I did just like cross-reference everything, like a lot of different websites, the Fiat forum. The biggest thing what was really hard to find was the, uh, the right uh, cooling liquid. So then I was thinking like, okay, I'm flushing the damn system, so does it make really big difference? I don't know. And there is some Motox Classic or something what is good for aluminium casted iron, brass, copper, etc, etc. But then I did check the, some like K12 plus or something like the newer stuff. It's basically rated for same stuff and it's easier to get. So I did take the... This, this was costing like under 10 euros for one canister and it's 5 liters. So the system should take only like 9 liters. But the reason why I did check this long life K12 well, plus is that it's basically it's ready to use. So we have two canisters here, and it's from Alpha Chem. That is the main reason why I did check this because the I can get the Alpha Chem straight from the local stores. So if I need to top up with the one liter or something like that, or I need to change the fluids in the future or something, I can just use always use the Alpha Chem, the same stuff. So I don't need to flush the damn system with the water and cleaner. And I did check that the, the long life, the new standard, the K12 plus is basically it should be okay with the cast iron, aluminium, uh, brass, copper, rubber seals, nylon seals, whatever is, is thrown in the system. Uh, it's super hard to find the Fiat standard one from 98. Yeah, I'm not paying like something like 30 euros for 3 liters of some classic high standard coolant fluid. I did find one Fiat code, something from the top loon or what? What is the standard fluid what they did have in the car? I, don't, I can't remember the name or the brand. But I did find newer, it was 2000 or 99 or something, and there was the Fiat code, uh, something like Fiat 355.78 or something like that. And then I did share that with the Google, but I did only find like liqu coolant liquids, liquids which are, are costing like 27 euros for one liter. So, yeah, it's going to cost like 300 euros for coolant fluids. No, no. And if I ever need to top up the system or uh, change small amount of fluids or I change some parts and I miss some fluids or something like that, then I need to order that from somewhere in Europe and wait for my coolant liquid to come. So that is the reason why it's just take the, uh, the best what I can get all around in Finland, in local shops or Puilo or Tokmanni or the, the cheap shops. So Alphakem is doing a lot of coolant liquids and you can get those from even from gas stations and everything. So I'm just marking that on the car. So get 12 plus and Alphakem. And then if my dad is using the car and he needs to top up the coolant, he can just check the coolant tank and get that from the gas station and top up the system. So it's raining today. That means I'm not going to change the, uh, the intercooler pipe or hose.
but let's go and check that. I don't know why they did even replace the broken hose or pipe with the piece of metal pipe and four clamps and one chip tie because you can get the new hose from Autodoc or Autocaupad or all the Estonian shops, all the European shops and everything has that hose in the stock so maybe they didn't even ask the dealer in Finland or I don't know did they even care but the hose clamps is clamps are more expensive than and getting the steel pipe is getting you are paying more than just getting the new hose the new hose is around 20 euros 20 euros 30 euros 40 euros it depends what brand you take it's not the best box but hey i i i take it i like when the shops are basically reusing the pack i guess So this is the valve cover seal, I want to get new one, because it may be leaks and I want to check the valve shim plates also, but this was costing 2 euros and it's easy to change. So this is the new hose for that, it has even the protection sleeve in here, basically what this yeah, this part is basically at the front of the engine, and this end goes to the, the side of the engine. So this was costing something like 20 euros or something. So it's the turbo hose. There is the part number 680601, and it's from MaxGear. I have... I've been using the MaxGear products lately and it's pretty good for the price it's not costing that much and it's solid quality so as you can see you can fit 100 amp hour uh, top AKM butter here I did make the new wood blocks on the sides here and I did add this strap here under the wood plank so it's not lifting the battery or the battery is not lifting anymore and then I have the small aluminium pieces at the both ends here, screw it to the, the plywood, so it's not moving this way or this way or up and down. And there is the positive, there is the negative, and as you can see, we have the little bit different setup right now. This is the original wiring, or yeah, wiring. I did change the M8. Uh, connectors here but we have the different kind of battery connector here so this is the Victron connector for the battery charger and now the ultimate plan is to basically use a so this is going to be stored under the driver's seat when I get the EPL away why I did go with this road because I get second of these connectors and I am going to install that connector cable to the motor battery so whenever I need to charge this one or the motor battery I can just take this charger under from the under the driver seat and I can just hook this on the battery the laser battery or the motor battery it doesn't matter and same time I just can take this whole damn charger and I keep these at my garage, so I can charge my own car battery or any batteries what I have in the garage, like that one. Do we need the battery charger on the motorhome? I don't know. We are using so much. We are just basically push camping or... Uh, driving from bush park to other bush park so I don't want to invest too much for the like Victron IP67 what is screw it in or screw it under the driver seat and you cannot take that away 
So what I'm going to do here, I'm just gluing some velcros here at the both ends and then I'm making the velcro patches under the driver's seat and then I can just always charge the battery what I want to charge with this one. I think it's the best option. And it's it this is this is seven amperes, so this is not costing that much. But it's still solid Victron quality charger. Keep in mind the the original electroblock is having only seven amper charger also. And yes, as you can see there is like three centimeters clearance between the seat body and the the battery post. So nothing to worry about that. If you go here the test battery number one it doesn't really work, but the test number battery number two is working fine. And we can get the main power on and off. And I don't know about this one, but uh, and this doesn't really work. I don't know. Do um do we need the ground power for this? It doesn't really make any sense, but I don't know. So yesterday I did visit here, I did uh, check that the battery is fitting under the seat. And then I did change the air filter on this thing. So right now I need to move my car away from the rear. And then I need to pack this up and drive my car here. And take this Fiat to the service center. Or car service center here in Nokia. So they are changing the timing belt tomorrow. So, but we are dropping the car to the service center today and giving the keys. Let's go. Let's test this. Oh, it's dead. I don't know why this is dead. I was thinking it's coming from the, the laser battery. But it's still dead.